All right, we're going to rock and roll because uh, 45 minutes is not a lot of time for me. <laughs> I've been in fitness for 20 years. Uh, I've had a facility, too, for 16 years. I actually started in Slovenia, in Europe. Uh, we started our first facility, and it's been going strong for 16 years. One in Seattle, 14 plus years. Now, I pre frame that just because like, the gym is what I do, right? It's what I live in. Um, but on top of that, now I've become a writer for men's health, uh, a consultant for precision nutrition. It goes on and on and on. But everything is in a fitness space. So there's two things that I you know, do a lot of, and it's like get clients' results and help gym owners grow their businesses. Those are the two things. So today, what I'm going to go over is the thing that we need to do to actually stay in business and, and build our business, which is get results, right? And what's one, one, one of those things? How to get clients motivated. Now, I'll, here's the deal. Can we really get people, can we give people motivation? No, right? We can't give people motivation. What we can do is we can unlock motivation. And what we can do is we can help people be self-motivated. Now, there's a science to this. And so I'm going to go today over some of the science behind this and put it in practical ways of how you can implement it into your business, right? So it's just not like in the ether, and you're like, well, oh, that sounds smart. How do I do this, okay? And, and this goes for any service-based business. I don't care what business you are. Like, this not only connects the person to, because it, it, it doesn't only get results, it gets them more connected to your community, right? Whatever that may be. And so I like to do things in threes. By the way, if, if you know, if you got a website or anything like that, people really like the things in, th in threes. Step one, step two, step three, right? You start doing too much. There's a thing that Donald Miller taught me, said if you confuse, you lose, right? So we're gonna try to make sure there's no confusion. So here's the three things I'm gonna go over today. Each one's gonna have some practical stuff that goes along with it. Number one, how do we motivate clients? The five whys in finding your anchor, okay? And I, I think there's gonna be a lot of points even here for you. If, if you're in a space where you're like, man, how do I get more fired up? about doing the work, right? The things that you're gonna learn here, how do I apply it? How do I get motivated to apply it? I think you're gonna find a lot of things here that will help you out too. Number two is small wins equal big results, okay? I think actually that's one of the big mistakes in fitness that happens a lot. A lot of people go gung-ho. Think about New Year's resolutions. I'm gonna work out every day, I'm gonna do this crazy diet. Like this year, this year, <laughs> it's gonna happen, right? Yeah. <laughs> right? So, <laughs> But here, here's the thing, right? Like I'm gonna give you guys kind of like a, a framework of how you can help clients actually feel more motivated and it compounds, right? They build more self-esteem, guess what? Then they do take on more and then they keep getting better results. And number three is the self-determination theory. If you guys like, a, it's a geeky word, but I'll break it down into very, very simple things. It's like self-determination theory is how do people become more self-motivated, more self-reliant? Okay, and, there's, and, and I'll give you guys examples of how you do that in a fitness business, right? In your gym, you could do it in any wellness space. So first of all, what's your why? Because uh, people say this, what's your why? But I always say like, this is the reason, behind the reason, behind the reason, behind the surface reason that you wanna make a change in your life. And if you're in, in fitness, think about how many times somebody's come up and said, uh, hey, sit down, what do you want your results to be? Oh, well, I wanna lose 30 pounds. Right, that's a very surface like reason. I wanna tell you guys a story this is so clear and vivid in my mind. When we had a client that I sat down with, same thing. The, the answer was, I want to lose 60 pounds. That was the first, I would say, the first answer that I got. And I started digging a little bit. And these are actually the questions. This is, I call them the five whys, or the five, six, and seven is what we call them in, uh, with our coaches. Right? So why, why are you doing this program? Like, why do you reach out to us? You'll get an answer. Then it was, well, that's awesome. Why do you want to achieve that? Okay, and then it'll give you an answer for that. And sometimes, you know, the second answer will be the right, will be the deeper one, but a lot of times it takes about five. But her last answer was that her son was running across, they, so they live right by the street, meaning right by the street. It's like about 25 yards from their door to the street. And her son started running towards the street, started running after him, could not run, got out of breath, had to stop. Thankfully, her son stopped before the street, right before the street. Now, think about that as a deep reason and an anchor for you to want to change your health and fitness. Now, here's the other thing, too. Once you find that, think about every single thing that we do that's connected to that anchor. Right? When we start talking about nutrition and we connect it to that anchor. 
We start talking about a fitness program on lifestyle changes. There's a very, very deep reason now that this person would want to do that. Now, here's another thing too. Okay, if you guys ever heard of Ikigai in Japan, right? it's basically when they studied blue zones and, and um, people that live the longest are the healthiest. Okay, they went to these blue zones and one of them was in Japan and they found out that there was no diet that was like the main reason because different places had different diets. But every single person had this. Ikigai is like a reason to live. Right? So the judo instructor was 92 years old, continued to teach judo because that gave them meaning. Okay? Or somebody that would continue to garden because they love to make food for their grandkids. So meaning, right? the anchor, is such an important part. Now, the reason why I brought this up and giving you like this, the five, six, and seven, is because if you guys just start with the client that comes to you in whatever space they come to you and you can get to their anchor, you already now have a more committed client and a more motivated client that you can always go back to remember why you came here, right? And I can't tell you how many times I've done that where people will get, like it makes them get back on track. They have this meaning. It's so, so powerful, trust me, right? And the thing is, and I'll train my whole team on doing this, right? Where every time when somebody, we call them strategy sessions, right? Somebody comes in, inquires about our services, we do a strategy session, and when they come in, I'll talk to the coaches like, hey, what was their anchor? Now they know, right? Because at the beginning, it's like, oh, you know, they just want to put on some muscle. Ah, hmm, we got to dig deeper. And the thing is, sometimes, you know, people will say like, oh, well, you know, that's very salesy. I'm like, no, don't, like, don't you want this person to succeed? Like, that's what we do, right? We help people get results. So they're going to be better off for this. And the stuff that we teach them and that, we, that they apply is going to actually work more. Okay, number two. The small wins. Now, here's the deal. People don't change by feeling bad. And what I mean by that is, if you've ever ran group training, personal training, how long does it work if you're beating somebody down? Right? You suck, do this. Right? It doesn't work. In science show, it doesn't work. So the reason why I say that is because if you're taking on a lot, and we're going to do this crazy detox, and we're going to train twice a day, first of all, it's unsustainable. Right? Number two, People start feeling really bad, either because they can't do it because it's too much, too soon, right? And the thing is, the feeling bad is not motivational. Again, I'm, I'm going back to not only experience, but the science of what we know that's been studied to what gets us there, right? Number two, this is a big one. We mistake aspirations for beha uh, behave behaviors. And this is an example. Get better sleep versus put your air, uh, phone on airplane mode in the evening. Right, one is an aspiration, right? I wanna get better sleep. Really important, obviously. Right, but the thing is that one can be done right now, it's a behavior, the other is impossible to achieve at any given moment. So if you're like, I wanna get better sleep, I'm like, okay, good. Tomorrow, get better sleep. You're like, okay. <laughs> and then tomorrow night, you're like, today I'm gonna to get better sleep. Like, how do you do that? You have to break it down into actionable steps, right? It has to be broken down into actionable steps and behaviors, something that you can track Right? Something you can have a plan for. And so that's the difference there, right? Because you can't just suddenly get better sleep. So we know there has to be a be like an actionable behavior that's attached to it. And this is another one. Like we, beg we, we set big lofty goals and then we rely on motivation to achieve them. Now, I didn't tell you this at the beginning, right? Because it would kind of mess up the whole presentation. Motivation doesn't work. <laughs> now, when I say that, I mean that it doesn't work on a, as a standpoint of if you let motivation be the driver of your behaviors, you're not going to be successful. Because it's, it's fleeting, right? It's up and down. It's, right? Every day, you can be fired up, somebody inspires you, yeah, you're ready to go. And then what about when you have a bad day? You didn't sleep a lot. Something bad happened. This is life. Now you're not motivated. So then do you not do the thing that's really important? Right? That's why we started with the anchor. That's why the anchor is so important in life. Okay? Now, I say this because it's unreliable. But the things that I'm going to show you, and even with the small wins, it keeps building up. Okay, so there's a couple of great books I like to read a lot, but this is the science behind, right? So BJ Fogg, Stanford Behavior Desi the Design Lab, he's studied 25 years of, of habits, right? And tiny habits, atomic habits, they have a lot of, I would say, correlation. But what they found is that breaking things down into actionable things that 
people can actually believe that they'll do works much better. So we have a question at our gym and all our coaching. After we outline some behaviors, we say, on a scale of one to 10, how confident are you that you can do this 90% of the time? Okay. Now, if the answer is a nine or a 10, it means they're confident. They're, it's very likely that they'll do it. Eight is teetering. Anything that's seven or below, that means it's gonna to be too hard and they won't do it. So now the question is, hey, what would get you to a 10 here? Okay, and they might have an answer for that. And if not, we're gonna make it a little bit easier until they say nine or 10, okay? This is actually a tons, of, tons of studies too with, with kids showing, you know, if kids don't believe that they're good at math, then they don't study it, then they're not good at math, right? So there has to be, they have to have belief that they'll be able to do it. Which means it's our responsibility, because we understand this, to give them a task that may be challenging, but they can believe that they'll do it consistently. Okay, so excellent books to read, but here's the deal. This is, this is the analogy that I use. This is an analogy I believe you, you can and should use with your clients too, is the self-esteem bank account. Anybody here ever heard of the self-esteem bank account analogy? Good, awesome. <laughs> All right, so this is how it works. Self-esteem to me is, is like this. When you tell yourself you're gonna do something, now what I'm gonna tell you, right, what I'm gonna tell myself, tomorrow morning, you know what, tomorrow morning I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna get my workout in, okay? And if you get up and you're like, oh, snooze, boop, right? What did I just do? So I basically put a debit in my self-esteem bank account, okay? Now if I actually did it, I'd put a credit in there. Problem is, is that, for instance, those big lofty goals that we talk about, right? I'm gonna work out every day, uh, I'm gonna do this diet that's pretty aggressive. What happens is that it's so hard to do, and it's not like necessarily your fault because you're just taking on too much because media is telling you to do it. Now you start stacking all these, I would say, debits in your self-esteem bank account. Right now, if you build too many, what happens? You go broke, right? Your broken self-esteem, and then you stop believing yourself, right? And this is where you kind of have that defeating, I can't do it. It's, you know, it's not meant for me, my genetics, right? Like you start doing that. So how, but the thing, question is, like how do you get back to being very, very rich in your self-esteem bank account, okay? Well, you start doing small enough things to where you can achieve them, right? Because it puts a little credit in there. And then another one, right? And even, like I said, James Clear talks about it in the book. Don't go for a three-mile run. How about put your shorts on your shirt on and go for a 10-minute walk? Right? It's a smaller action. You should kind of feel like it's easy. I tell our clients, they'll say like, this is easy. I'm like, great, you will be able to do it every day for the next seven days then. Yeah, okay, great, awesome. Right, day three, day four, maybe they're like, you know, I went out for that 10 minute walk and I just started running and I got a 20 minute run in. Oh, excellent, right? They end up doing more, but what they're doing is they're stacking that self-esteem bank account. Right, instead of going like, hey, every day, here's this meal plan, which doesn't work. Go like, all I want you to do, tomorrow is have 30 grams of protein with every meal. And they do that. Oh, that wasn't that difficult. Boom, self-esteem bank account, right? And so, because that's part of our mission. It's not just like, hey, here's the X's and O's. Listen, if the X's and O's and all the knowledge, right, that we have, if that was all it took for people to get the best results, we'd be in a different place as a country, right, and health, right? And so that's the thing. We, we have to understand this because this is how we get people better results. Okay, the self-esteem bank account, build it up so much because here's another thing that happens and this is even personally for anybody here that's listening to, to this that's like, man, I wanna build up my self-esteem bank account. I, I doubt that anybody wants to be like, no, I don't want to, right? The more, the more self-esteem you have, the better. Because when somebody put like, you know, if, if for everybody here that's a business owner, you put yourself out on social media, what's one of the things that stops you from doing it? A lot of times, ooh, I'm gonna get persecuted Right? Somebody's going to say I'm dumb, that what I'm saying is dumb. I'm like, right? I, we do that all the time. And, and I call that pop, the poppy flower syndrome. Right? Poppy flowers, if you've ever seen them, if there's a field of poppy flowers and one sticks out, you know what they do? They chop it off. Right? So poppy flower syndrome is where we get in our heads and go like, well, I don't want to stand out because I'll get persecuted and judged. Which you will because that's how humans are. We judge, right? But if I can build this up, now if somebody goes like, your content sucks, I'm like, huh? Oh, Okay, unfollow, unblock, right? Whatever, just block, bye. Right, because my self-esteem is there. 
But if not, if I already have an editor inside of my head that's telling me how I suck and I didn't complete that and I couldn't do this, then I stop posting content, right? Because my self-esteem is bankrupt. And so that's why this is so, so important, guys, that like, yes, I'm talking about the fitness space, but this is anything. I, I coach, like I said, gym owners and coaches to build their businesses. The same thing, right? We all need this. And so another example of when we talk about the bank account is this, and this is another James Clear example, and I love this. I love this so much, and I share it with our clients. And I say, every time you do something, you cast a vote for this. Who do I want to become, right? I didn't find anybody I could quote, so I just quoted myself, but that's okay. But the point being is this, listen guys, if, I t if tomorrow, I know pick a sport that you, know, you don't play a lot, ping pong maybe, right? If tomorrow you play ping pong, and then you know, on Wednesday you play ping pong again, and I say, hey, are you a ping pong player? You'd be like, no, I, I mean, I've played it, but I'm, I'm not a ping pong player. But for, if for a year and a half, three times a week you play ping pong, after that, if I ask you if you're a ping pong player, what would you say? I'm a ping pong player. Why? Because you cast enough votes for that identity. Okay? So if you do an eight-week transformation challenge program, after the eight weeks and somebody goes like, hey, are you like a fitness enthusiast or do you think you're, you believe you're fit? People will be like, uh, I don't know. A year of training consistently? Yeah. Yeah, I'm fit. You've cast enough votes for that identity. Same thing, are you a content creator? I don't know, I, I put some content up, right? But it's like, you do content for two years straight, you post twice a day, you'll be like, yeah, I'm a content creator. Right, so what, the thing is, is like, what are you casting your votes for? Because you gotta be careful here, guys. Like, you get up in the morning, you snooze three times, casting votes to be a snoozer, right? Like, you can't, you know, if you don't, if you're not consistent, now you're casting votes that you don't, you're not consistent. And the thing is, we become our identities, but our, our identities are what we repeatedly do. So this is, I, I legitimately still this. I have this question on my computer in my office because I remind my, I'm always like, who do I look at, who do I want to become? I ask clients all the time, who do you want to become? And they tell it to me in like in detail. And then I say, okay, what does that person do? If, if you guys ever seen this, I pulled this off, right? This is another very, very important a principle to think about. So most people, what they do is they have a thought, and that thought creates a feeling. I'll give you an example, right? Alarm sounds off, get up in the morning, you're, you were gonna do a workout, the thought is like, oh, I'm tired. Went to sleep less, late last night. Too much Netflix, right? Yeah. So the thought is, I'm tired. The feeling becomes oh, fatigued, right? Irritated. So what's your action? Continue to sleep, okay? Because people act on, if you put it this way, if you act on your thoughts that create a feelings and then drive an action, it's gonna be very difficult to create the life that you want, okay? So I flip it upside on, on, on kind of like upside down. First, you decide this, my identity. Who do I want to become? And then I base like what action, right? What action would that person take? Right, the person I want to be become, what action would that person take? And then I take that action regardless of how I feel. Okay? And here's the deal. Once you take the action, then you'll get a feeling. And guess what? The feeling is going to be the feeling you want. Guaranteed. Right? And a mentor of mine uh, back in the day said, hey, he said, Luca, let me tell you about what commitment is. Okay? Commitment is three things. Number one, do what is required. Okay? So what is required, let's say, since you know, we're talking gym, if, if you're like, hey, I wanna you know, deadlift three, 400 pounds, but I only wanna train once every two weeks. That's not what's required. It's gonna be more than that, okay? So you have to do what's required. I wanna build my social media account up to 100,000 followers, okay? But I'm posting once a week. It's not enough, like, it's not what's required. So first you have to determine, number one, what's required? Number two, what is commitment? Do what you said you do when you said you do it. One, one thing I can tell you that will make you successful in business, that has nothing to do with technology and social media and lead generation, that if you continue to do the thing that you said you do over and over and over again, your business will grow, 100%. It's actually, customer service and customer experience is so bad right now in, in businesses 
Uh, if you guys want another book that will break that down, it's called Never Lose a Customer Again by Joey Coleman. It's really bad, right? So that if you just follow through on the things that you tell your clients to do, they will talk about you, okay? They'll refer, word of mouth will blow up, I promise. Right, so number two is do what you said you do. Now the third one is the one that I really, really love. It's the hard one, but it's the one I really love, which is do it despite of feelings, emotions, moods, and thoughts, right? Because you gotta do what's required, but you gotta do it despite how you feel, or you're in the mood, or you're, you're, you're you know, pissed off at somebody. Still gotta do it, right? I mean, that's fitness there in a nutshell, right? If you just do things when you feel like it, you ain't gonna do it. You wanna grow your business just when you feel like it, you're not gonna do it, right? So just remember that, like this is, this is so powerful. That if you ask yourself like, okay, what's my identity? Right? Who do I want to become? And then align those behaviors with that, it changes your life, I promise. Okay? Number three, self-determination theory. Like I said, this is the geeky word. But what this means is like, so it suggests that people are able to become self-determined. That means self-motivated. If they have these three needs met, okay, competence, connection, they call it relatedness, but it's connection, and autonomy. Autonomy is choice. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you guys these three in real life in a, in a gym business, how they look. Autonomy, feeling one has choice and is willingly endorsing one's behavior. What that means is like, if you feel like you have choice, you're empowered and self-motivated. Because there's nothing more disempowering to be like, I don't have a choice. Like I can't do anything about this, okay? So how do we make this happen in actual real world actions? Number one, the client is in charge. So when we have a session, for instance, to sit down when somebody starts training with us, okay? We'll ask people questions like, hey, how many meals do you prefer eating a day? Uh, like three? Okay, great, so then we'll, we'll do three. And then folks will sometimes say, isn't it better if I do five? No, no, like you're, you're in charge. Like this is co-active coaching, okay? I really, you know what, I'm really scared of doing back squats. You know what, that's awesome, because we're not gonna do back squats. Right? And the thing is, that's very, very powerful so that they understand. Because what do people many times think still training is? You're going to come in and I'm going to be like, you're going to do this and this and this and this because I'm the expert. So you're going to do that or you won't get results. Right? That is so 15 years, <laughs> 15 years ago and just doesn't work. Right? It does not work. So we have to, we have to let the, show the client that they're in charge. Number two is they got to have enough choice. Right, they have to have enough choice. Enough choice can come to like uh, training programs, nutrition. Hey, listen, out of these exercises, which ones are you afraid of or do you not want to do? I really, I'm not sure about this one and this one. Okay, great, we're gonna put these in there. Which one would you rather do, this one or this one? Like little stuff. Would you rather do trap bar deadlift or would you rather do elevated regular bar deadlift? As soon as you give them the thing is, they don't know that this is what you're doing, by the way, okay? But, you gave them choice, and as soon as they made a choice, they feel what? In power, okay? And that makes them self-motivated, okay? So this is really important. Ask yourself in your business, where can you create choice? And it can be little things, right? Hey, would you rather do dumbbells or kettlebells? Dumbbells, that's it. They, they, ch they chose, right? With nutrition, we do this a lot. Ask them a lot of questions. Do you, uh, do you love carbs or fat more? Oh, I love carbs. Okay, great. Right? Like, you're constantly doing it, and they don't even know about it. It can be things like in a training session saying, hey, what weight would you like to start with today? You know what? I'm feeling sore today. Let's start with a lower weight. Okay, cool. See, we, we're, we're hiding choice within all these little things. And so they're constantly empowering themselves when we do that. Okay? This works at a level that's great. Like, we get so many people that... Hey, I went there, I got good results in a short amount of time, I just couldn't stick with it, and they told me that I'm not committed, that I suck, because I couldn't stick with it, right? Which is horrible as a coach, right? So then we gave them more choice, and they felt like, wow, I get to choose here. And they keep coming, and they keep being self-motivated. Number three, let them collaborate in the process. All right, so again, I, I would say that like, the first part of my career, I was like, I know all this stuff. You're gonna do what I know. And then I realized that like, that, like there was a certain percentage of people that got excellent results, certain percentage was eh, and then some didn't. And I, I, I believed that like they were wrong, but really I just wasn't a good enough coach to be able to coach them, right? 
And then I studied, I studied like psychology for nine years like a maniac. Because I was like, there's something, there's something I have to be able to do better to get everybody results. And then this is how I learned all these things. Okay? And when I started collaborating with people, and they were like, well, you know, Luca, I really love this. Even though I didn't believe it was the best optimal option, I, when I let them collaborate, they were excited about doing it. They felt empowered. They kept showing up. And over the course of a certain amount of time, they got better results. Because guess when you can't get results? When you don't show up. Right? Impossible to get results. So question for you, how can you create autonomy, choice, inside of your business? And again, are you in fitness? Are you in wellness? Are you in it doesn't matter. Like You can do this everywhere. You can do this everywhere. These are baseline principles of psychology. Okay, number two, competence. The experience of mastery and being effective in one's activity. So the feeling of progression. If you make someone feel like they're basically progressing, they feel good. Okay? This is really important. So number one, how do we create quick wins? Now, we have this whole quick wins analogy right, inside of our gym businesses. And even when somebody comes for a strategy session or assessment, okay, imagine somebody says, you know, like, my low back's bugging me a little bit, okay? And we do a test, right? We do a couple of tests and like, oh, when I do this, oh, it's bugging me here a bit. And then we go like, okay, listen, we're gonna take you through a protocol. We're gonna give you some mobility drills, some activation drills. 10 minutes later, they go, wow, I don't feel that anymore. What did we do? Quick win, right? In 10 minutes, even in a warm up. Again, the other thing, how can we do quick wins? When we, instead of always looking at weight loss, for example, right? Because the thing is, it gets complicated sometimes, right? In the sense of, are you, from one week to the next, are you going to lose a ton of weight? Look, sometimes you can, but if you're doing it sustainably, probably not. But how, so how can we show somebody progress? They add an extra rep to their exercise. They, put, they lift a little bit more weight. Now, if we're timing a set on a conditioning, we're always showing people that they're progressing, which means that you have to track things. Okay? And again, this is where the software comes in. This Vagar software can come in where you can just put notes in. It's a CRM system. What are people doing? Hey, listen, check this out. Look at last week's time. You, bu you bumped it down by seven seconds. As soon as you do that, people are excited. You know what else? How can I make a quick win, quick win in a session? Showing somebody when they're lifting, a specific, they don't, let's say they're doing a lunge and it's looking wacky, and I coach them up. So I film them how they're doing it, then I coach them up, and I'm like, look at how much better it is. And I show them the video, right? In a minute, I show them a quick win, right? So how can the thing is, you gotta create a culture of that in your business, right? Creating a quick win over and over and over again. Because again, what is it doing? It's self-motivating, right? Celebrating milestones. So inside of our gym, we have something called a PR bell, right? A personal record bell. Most people have no idea what that is. So this is the coolest thing, right? When something happens, like let's say somebody just deadlifted more than they did the previous week. And we're like, yo, go, go, go ring the PR bell. And they're like, what, huh? It's like that bell right there. And they'll run up and they're like all weirded out. And they ring it and the whole gym goes like, yeah. And they're like, ah. Right, it's, it's like, here's the other thing. People are not used to that. And I mean that in the best of ways. Everybody's cheering them on, right? They won. Like most of the time in their life, work, home, nobody celebrates them. Like we celebrate them, right? A lot of PRs, a lot of ringing bells in our gym, right? Also, let's say somebody told me, I'm giving you guys examples. This is like I said, thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of clients coached over the course of 20 years. Somebody goes like, I want to knock out one push-up, one great push-up or one great chin-up when they do it. So again, you should make that. So in your CRM, right, you should take a note. What do these people want? What's the big thing for them? So when they knock out the first chin up, apart from ringing the bell, next day, they get a card. I'm so proud of you for your first chin up. $20 gift card to Amazon, to Nike, something, something personal, right? We don't just make it generic, we make it personal. Do you know how blown away those people are? It's like, wow. Right, clients for life. And guess what they do? Hey, I knocked on my first chin up. I rang the PR bell. The whole gym went crazy. It was nuts. It was like a concert. It's like Tony Robbins was there. And then the next day rewarded me for it. I should reward them. Who they tell their friends. Like like an amazing restaurant that like you don't have to ask them how it was. They want to tell you how amazing it was. 
This can be a system, guys. Right? This can be a system inside of your business. Number three, provide options for every skill level. So if you guys ever seen a chart, how do people learn, right? So if, let's say I get a former pro athlete, okay? We're a pro athlete, we train a lot of pros, we train professional teams, and I give them something that's too easy. They get bored, right? They're gonna be like, this is not challenging enough for me, all right? So I gotta make it more challenging. But if I make it too challenging, then they get frustrated. So you gotta find that sweet spot. Okay, so for us, we do a lot of group training, large group training, small group training. Um, I train high school basketball teams, pro professional rugby team. We have a lot of the NFL guys that will come in in large groups. And I have to provide options for every skill level, right? Because for one person, it's just the right amount of challenge. Somebody else, I'm seeing them, and it's just like, oh, they're getting frustrated. So I'm gonna find something that's gonna be just the right amount of challenge for them, right? So that means you have to understand what's a, what are the regressions and progressions in your business, right? Because as soon as I do that, now they're progressing, they're feeling better, and guess what? They're getting self-motivated, okay? So Tony Robbins said this, I 100% agree with this, which is progress equals happiness. Even if you're not where you wanna be, if you're on the road, if you're improving, if you're making progress, you're gonna love it, you're gonna feel alive. And I can say the same for, you know, I've, I've done a lot of things in my life. I, the way I came to the US was, I played college sports, basketball, went overseas, played pro, came back over here, opened two gym, a gym in Slovenia and then over here. But even when you have the things that you think that you want, but you stop making progress, there's something missing in your life, right? And so this is such a big deal. How do we consistently show clients progress? And sometimes maybe they're, you know, they're pausing in one area, but they're progressing in another area. All right, let's make sure that we show them. And then relating this, this is connection. The need to feel connected and have belonging to a group. I actually believe this might be the most powerful one out of all of them, right? We want to be connected, right? Think about even during COVID, why depression, anxiety, all these things skyrocketed because we're not around people. We don't have connection. Our brains grew because of this, okay? Social connection. So how do we do that? Well, number one, introduce new clients to other new clients and staff. The moment somebody comes into the gym, it's like, hey, this is Coach Kenzie, this is Coach Jess. Oh, hey, let me introduce you to this client. They've been here for eight years. And then everybody's super cool. So what happens? <sighs> I feel more at home, I feel safe, right? We know psychological safety is a huge driver of success. So introducing people to each other. Put new clients together with other new clients because you wanna put people together that are on this journey, right? They're starting on this journey. You're starting on this journey too. Well, why are you here? Well, you know, I just made a decision because I want to do that. Oh, yeah, me too. Okay, so this is very, very, very powerful. They create connection, they feel safe and at home, okay? Number three is create multiple opportunities for community and connection. So whether these are appreciation events, like we'll, we'll do random stuff where it's just like, hey, we're going to go for a hike, who wants to go? And then we do bigger parties, right? We do bigger parties like bowling party, come here, have drinks, and we're going to have food. Like as many appreciation things that you can do, the better. The one big one, which I'll, go, I'll show you guys in a second, that I feel has been really big for our business and over the last 15, 16 years, are charity boot camps, charity events. But, but I'll get to that in a second because these can be small or these can be big. So some can be more uh, structured, like, hey, we're gonna have a bigger ground appreciation party, everybody show up here. And then you have smaller ones where it's like clients, you know, groups of 15 to 20 do book of the month club. It's not everybody but they're building this community within the community. But the thing is, you should basically nurture and narrate that, if that makes sense. Start it and like, let it take on a life of its own. Right? When you find people that are like outdoor enthusiasts, like we have a bunch of people that are like, you know, I live in Seattle, Pacific Northwest, beautiful outdoors, folks that love to hike, okay? So get like, with the coaches that love to hike, start doing hike stuff. You know, we've had hikes where we've had like 35 people, which is, you know, you, you kind of, create the pathways, get all blocked up, you got that many people hiking on one little small trail. But it was, it was amazing, like they did a sunset hike, you got 35 people from the gym, you know, at 4.30 getting up and doing a sunset hike, that brings people together like crazy, okay? Because you want to create that community, it's what, it's what makes people not want to leave, right? So this is a great quote that I love and I share with people all the time, I say, hey, pain shared is pain divided and happiness shared is happiness multiplied. So when people are going through struggles and they have a community where they can share that struggles, you know, when we have, uh, you know, people lose 
uh, a family member, a friend, you know, flowers get sent every time. We send flowers, we send a thank you note. I'm not thank you note, I'm sorry. We, we send a note to them like, hey, for condolences, everybody signs it, right? We're showing that we care, because we do. But it, what it does is it's like for people to be able to open up, it divides the pain, right? That's why if you don't have that, it creates a lot of problems because you have no outlet, right? But if I'm excited, I mean, what makes you more excited? You, you, you do something that makes you successful and then you have nobody to share it with. That's why when we do the PR bell stuff, what are you doing? You have a success that everybody shares in with your success, right? It's so powerful. Now this is, one of our, one of our values is leave it better than you found it. It's being a, a servant leader. And there's, a, there's another thing in motivation, in intrinsic motivation, that Sebastian Junger talks about in his book, Tribes, and it's contribution, right? When people contribute and give, it makes them more fulfilled. So when we do charity events, I mean, this picture, we have to cut it for the slide, but there's like probably about 140 people here. And we'll have like, when we do the bigger charity events, we'll have 140 people in class. We've raised $7,000 in an hour. Uh, in the last 16 years, we've done 700 events and I don't know, hundreds of thousands of dollars raised, tons of clothes, food, I mean, I can't even, it's, it's too much to, to even list. But the thing is, in our community, like, we've, we lift the community up, and so the community lifts us up. Right? So we go through tough times, guess what? The community comes together, like, no, we'd never let this gym fail, ever. Right? And so, how can you do charity events, things that matter to you? And then here, and I'll give you like the real quick breakdown of how to make this successful, okay? We get a DJ, so it's a party, mm. right? It's nuts. If you, you can go on YouTube and watch some of the videos, it's like, it's bananas. We've had live music playing during this. Just nuts. We'll do raffles, we'll do auctions, right? So it's like a FOMO event, like fear of missing out. And what happens, like all your members are like, come to this event. So you, we'd get like 60, 70 new leads through one event, right? Because what do we ask them for? Hey, fill out this health history form just to make sure, and then we need your phone number and email. Right, at the end, what do we do? Hey, thank you so much for helping us raise $3,000, you're so awesome. Hey, but at, until the end of the week, because of that, we'd love to give you a week of VIP training. Two semi-private sessions, blah, 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 right? And then they come in, and of course, what do we do? We, we do a great experience and we convert, right? But this, but the thing is, it's like this, look at all, I mean, look at the faces in there. Look at that. Is anybody, like everybody's happy as hell, right? <laughs> community, community and contribution, connection. Like, and people are coming together, okay? So this is a cool thing. Again, notice I geek out, so I study the science of things and then I integrate them into business. So there's something called a like formula, and it says this, proximity, frequency, duration, and intensity. The more of those you have, the more people like you, to the degree that if you walk in a park with your dog, if you have a dog, past somebody, right, and you don't say a word, after 30 days, if somebody asks you, like, do you like that person, be like, yeah. Why? Proximity. You, 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 they're, they're there, right? You just get to know, like you get to know them without getting to know them, right? This is, this is human psychology, guys, okay? Frequency, the more frequently that I see them, the more I'm gonna like them. Duration is the amount of time, and then intensity is, what are the challenges, if I go through an intense time, okay? What do we do, like for instance, in a, in a workout? At the end we do finishers, you struggle, right? I mean, they're not easy. So the intensity is higher. Okay, so this is the like formula. How do you get people to like you more? Now here's the cool part about this. If I go on social media and I go live, are people, it's not the same as being person to person, but it's still proximity, right? If they're watching me, frequency, duration, right? So that's why I like, hey, be on social media, put yourself out there. That's a really important one. A Couple other ones, these are quick hitters, right? Environments trigger behavior. So one of the most motivating things is if you, if you create an environment People, remember, people adhere to the social standards of the tribe. So whatever the tribe does, people want to do. So make an environment be very, very, I would say, uplifting, right? And then you're gonna help people be more motivated. Number two is this quick tomorrow. I got this from a bunch of, I have a bunch of friends that are in the military. They always had the saying as they go through the hardest of, I would say, the trainings. Hey, just make it through today. You can quit tomorrow. Right, and instead of, think, what do most people say? I'll start tomorrow, right? Flip that, quit tomorrow. Having skin in the game, so if somebody invests more money with you, right, they're gonna be more motivated. I know I am. If I spend 20 bucks a month, whatever, I spend $2,000 a month, I am locked in, right? Seriously. And then social accountability. So there's the three things that we tell folks 
which is you're going to get accountability from your peers that are just where you are on your journey. You're going to get accountability from people that are ahead of you because they got the result that you want. And you're going to get accountability from your coaches that are experts in this area. Okay? So I've been storytelling a little bit. Make sure you get great at storytelling. But the last thing that I want to make share with you is this. Okay? How do you get people? Because what is motivation? Like if I said, what is motivation to you? I'd say, I'm getting people fired up. Right? That would sound like motivation. So one of my really close friends, Martin Rooney, said, hey, you must first be on fire before you can make somebody else burn. Okay, so if, you, if I'm running a class and I'm like this, hey, what's up, guys? Oh, only slept three hours, you know. But let's go. Let's really ramp up this energy. Like, I can't, I can't. Conviction is transferred. Belief is transferred. You understand? So I have to have it to give it to you. So the thing is, you have to be on fire. You have to be on fire. Like, if you come to my gym, I've been doing this for a long time. It could very easily be like, one of, I've been doing this for a long time. I'm on fire. I run classes. I am on fire. Okay? People are like, this dude's lost his mind. He's on something, right? And the thing is, so how do you do that? Look, we started with this. We're going to end with this. You got to know your why, right? So what's your anchor in this business, right? What's the deep reason that you do it? If it's just money, it's, it's not going to take you that far. And I listen, I love money and making money, but that's not the main thing, okay? So what is your anchor? Number two, I sell co collect role models and hunt for skill sets. So the people that are doing things, that you want to do at the level that you want to do it, that's a role model. Learn how they're doing things. Learn how they're thinking. Study their books. Go to their courses. Buy their mentorships. Hunt for skill sets. What do you need? To, like even today, are you excellent at the things that I talked about? I still don't think I'm the best that I could be. So you got to build that skill set. Right? You got to hunt for it. You want to be great, be great at social media stuff? Hunt for that skill set. Practice it. Just like you play, practice in basketball. You can't be good at shooting threes if you don't shoot threes. Right? And number three, take action because it's going to motivate you. So I always leave anything that I do, I'm like, whatever you learn here, if you got to apply at least one thing in your business, actually do it today. Make a phone call, go like, hey, listen, like, we got to put this in the system. Okay? Because the thing is, as soon as you take action, you're going to build that self esteem bank account. Right? It'll motivate you, it'll fire you up. Right? Whereas there's nothing worse coming from a conference going like, Man, I learned a lot. Whew, that's crazy, man. I'm, I'm studying, studying. But then you don't apply it. It actually depletes that bank account. Because then, you know, a month later, you're like, I went to that thing, I learned all this stuff, and I didn't apply it. Okay, so that's, that's my challenge to you is that not tomorrow, tonight, get back to the hotel room, do something. I don't care what it is, but like whatever you learn, maybe it's not from this presentation, maybe it's from another presentation, apply it. Right? And you'll be more fired up, and it'll move you and your business forward. Thank you. Thank you very much.